Hi, my name is Julie Nice. I'm from Kitsumkalem, Terrace, British Columbia, part of the Simchian Nation. And today we'd like to talk about traditional harvesting in urban settings. Uh, you may not know it, but there are natural resources at your fingertips. You may, may not have. Part of my background in this area, I started with um, blueberry picking with my parents as a young child. And then as I grew older, um, my auntie, Rena Point Bolton, she's a medicine lady uh, from Simshian and Stolo Nation. And my brother and myself would help her with her gathering process. If she needed some plants or fruits or whatever, she'd let us know and we would go out and get them for her. Sometime in people's lives, they leave the village for one reason or another, to go to college or to move away and help a family member. And once they're away from home, they realize that they're away from a lot of things besides family. They start missing things and traditional foods is one of the major uh, missing components. Choke cherries we find in the lower mainland. They're kind of a high bush tree and they hang like grapes. And you can't really eat them raw because that's why they give have the name choke cherries. It gives you itchy throat. So that process, the jarring process takes that away and um, it makes the best jam. It's so red and tastes so sweet. Wild blueberries. There's so many ways you can process wild blueberries. You could just dry them uh, for teas later on, or you could freeze them for smoothies or just to eat later on in pies, or you can jam them to make syrup or just preserves. Devil's Club in Somalia is one, oops, and it's gathered in springtime and fall time is the best harvesting time for it. It's when they're dry inside and the needles on the outside aren't alive, so you could just scrape off the spines, the thorns, to get to the center part. That's what you're going to harvest. You can make a salve out of it, which is boiling down the inside and then mixing it in with uh, olive oil or a Vaseline to make it into a rub. Or you can dry the little chunks of it and you can boil that for a tea to drink daily. Saskatoon berries would have been full of life and you'll find bushes like this in the city settings all over the place, down by the river banks. They're bright blue like blueberries and they make the perfect jam. And then over here you'll see the soap berries, which will be the first thing in springtime ready. And you get either green or red soap berries and this is widely used for um, bone ailments like arthritis and stuff like that or the berries are just used to eat we whip them up with sugar and other fruits just to make like an Indian ice cream with good harvesting practices though you do have to learn your surroundings there are berries that are not um, good for eating. There are berries that are poisonous and they do look similar to the ones that aren't. So you do have to ask around, look at um, pictures, the internet to see what is good and what isn't. So, and if you're unsure, ask somebody. Don't just go eating stuff you don't know if it's safe or not. But the best thing is practice. Scout out your area, look around, get used to your surroundings you'll find good patches that you can return to year after year.